Hello and welcome to Crit Fail. I'm the Penguin, and with me is Ghost. Today we'll be doing a general review on the Wizards of the Coast Star Wars miniatures. These really old ones from, uh, when did this come out? I don't know, several years now. Like, they really are quite old. Um, I don't think they're ten years old, but maybe. Wow. They're, they're getting there. They were huge in their, in their day. The only miniature game in town that was Star Wars at the time was Wizards of the Coast. And like Fantasy Flight, they had both the miniature game and the RPG. And while I think that Fantasy Flight is doing an absolutely fantastic job with the RPG, the old D21 wasn't that bad. And it had a lot of uh, interesting stuff, like they added Clone Wars, uh, Force Unleashed, based on the computer game. Yeah. They had Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, info for running campaigns in that and they just released a whole bunch of source books on a whole bunch of different topics ones you don't normally see things like Old Republic was great it featured people uh, places ships yeah. equipment so if you really wanted to do it you had a whole range of eras in which to sort of utilize yeah. and at the same time they came out with the miniatures game which was specifically a miniatures game but of course RPG has used them as well and that's kind of like the side you usually went on, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I lent far more to using them in the RPG. Um, the only problem we had was the the way they boxed them, which was I'm pretty sure it was five to a box, and okay. it was uh, I think it was like three commons and uncommon and a rare or very rare, uh, which is all right at the start. But you hit a point where you were paying in Canada, they were about ten dollars plus tax per for box five minis? for five minis, uh, which was okay when you needed them. Yeah, it's not incredibly like you're not breaking the bank with that. No, but when you had two thirds of the set. Yeah, when you start having to buy like three or four just to get literally one mini, it starts getting kind of ridiculous. Yes, that that's where it started to fall apart, and because the RPG people were saying, "Well, come on, we just want to have." X in the game, yeah. and if it's one of the very rares, because some of them, like uh, Mon Mothma and Bail Organa, were very rares. And for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think, it's one of those weird things, I think for the miniature game too, I don't think people wanted to use them, because it's Mon Mothma. Yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> kind of underwhelming. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, someone putting her on the field, it's sort of like, Really? It's like, eh. She's gonna it's like diplomacy gonna, me yeah, to death? Just debate me to death. <laughs> Tell me why I'm, I shouldn't be doing this. But, it, I mean, these were even individually, some people were charging a fair amount of money. And How high were these going for, some of the super rares? Oh, the FET was the worst. On eBay, the highest I ever saw him was 500 bucks. <laughs> and that's the one where he's like just blasting off. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a nice looking miniature. You know, it's, it's, it's imaginative, him using his jetpack and that and using the flame as the stand. Fantastic yeah. idea. It, it looked good. And it's probably one of the best painted ones. Yeah, it's actually not badly done. I mean, not badly done, but... I mean, I that was the last one I had to finish Rebel Storm. I paid fifty for it, and I was like, "Why? What am I doing?" Yeah, fifty bucks for that, man. E even then, I was, and then I, you know, but fifty bucks you could get so many nice. But not long after that, I think it was the th Revenge of the Sith had come out, the actual miniature set, mm. uh, which is what these ones we have pictured here are from. They're all from the Revenge of the Sith set, and the Rebel Storm one, which is what Fett was in, had started to sort of climb. I think Revenge of the Sith probably might have been the game's peak. Okay. There were some sets after that. Like for New Hope and such, or was that earlier sets? Um, well, they mixed them all up. I mean, okay. uh, the first one was Rebel Storm, second one was Clone Strike, uh, third one was Revenge of the Sith, fourth one, I'm not sure, maybe there was, there was Universe. Uh, I think there was um, a Sith... Jedi 1, Jedi Academy maybe, I can't, not quite sure, but I think that Revenge of the Sith, the game had taken a fair amount of traction, there was events, it was in, uh, yeah, well, it was in stores. The fact that it was starting to sell for like 500 bucks for yeah. like the Fed one, uh, that's like, that's really good, that's tr like trading card quality. Oh, it, it was crazy. Like that got, that's pretty intense. And that, but that was the problem too, because the, there was a lot of people, at the, it, it started to split the community. 
And yeah. I think that's, that's where it gets bad because you had the ones that had the disposable cash. Because he's not the only one. Jabba the Hutt was rare, like very rare. Okay. And he might have been, I think I saw him for a hundred bucks at one point with bids on it. Yeah. So, I mean, you started to have the people that were, even in the gaming side, that were saying that this is an unfair arms race. Yeah, and the, for the games, it goes by, like, points, right? Yeah, yeah. So, although you could put the same amount of points on the table, I think that yeah. not all minis are created equal. Yeah, and then the more money you would be spending on a sort of mini, yeah. it's like, even though you it's equal amount of points, one might be better because it's more expensive, and yeah. it still might be an unfair advantage yeah. because one person has the bank to do it. Exactly. It's not fair to everyone else. Exactly. And I, I can see how that can get really uh, really frustrating. But the other, my biggest complaint, which is one I always have, no matter whether it's modeling, whether it's figure painting, whether it's this stuff or RPing, is that we need kids. We do need kids to yeah. follow us. We need them. Otherwise, you're going to have 80 year olds up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, we'll all be old and dying. You know, And that's what's happening with the modeling. You look at the average model, the age is 55. Yeah. If we if they don't start to bring kids into that hobby, that hobby will actually die out at yeah. some point. And role playing and all this stuff was the same. And this was Star Wars. This yeah. was like this was big. My biggest complaint was that that this is Star Wars. At the time, we didn't have the new movies like the way they are now. I mean, mm -hmm. we did have Phantom Menace and that, and there was more interest generating again. But mm -hmm. this was like the best time to go. Hey, kids. There's not just PlayStations and Xboxes and PC gaming. There's not just all that stuff and the, the, you know your mobile phones and all this yeah. sort of stuff. It was also this. It was like the perfect time to try to push gaming back to kids. And how the hell was that going to happen? Yeah. If I mean, yeah, I don't even think wanna... that really. Like, sorry, I'm going a little off, but I don't think that really happened. I remember growing up, like, well, obviously in the 2000s and. I've only recently caught the wind of the whole miniature side of it. Yep. I'm actually quite, in, in terms of age, just quite new to this whole uh, hobby still. And like during the 2000s, all the way to 2000, yeah, to 2010, I haven't heard like a word of it. So it's kind of a shame. A whole generation of stuff is kind of like missed out on. Yeah, exactly. And I, I always thought there was a massive opportunity. The kids have just seen the film. You had a miniature set they came pre-painted i prefer to paint them myself but yeah. you know fair enough i had no problem with the fact they were pre-painted they were interesting characters a lot of time there was new characters mm -hmm. and i just thought here's an opportunity for kids to be introduced and, yeah and they shown that like hey this is actually pretty cool and, and you know that's where i thought it started going wrong because if they started to look at how much it would cost or if they to, to do it I mean, if they just like, play with their yeah. mates, it's okay. But if they wanted to do tournaments, and really there shouldn't have been any reason for them not to, it started to come. If you didn't pull yeah. the really good minis, what are you going to say to your mum? You know, you're 10 years old, you love Star Wars, and you say, I want Boba Fett. And why wouldn't a kid want, you know, Boba Fett? Or, or Vader, or Jabba the Hutt, or any of those sort of really big name characters. Yeah. And if they can't pull them out of a pack, and the kid's going to be disappointed. His mum gives him ten bucks. That's all. He's, it's all he's got. That's his pocket money. He goes to the store, buys a box, and it's five minis he already got. And depending on how they trade, yeah, not all stores will trade one for one. They usually don't. They usually trade two for one, which meant if he wanted a very rare, he'd need two very rares and two really good very rares to get the one someone like Fat. Yeah, and it can just, you know, the parents are going to go, "I'm not doing that," and. The RPGers are like, well, you know, that was where they were getting split too, because they're like, okay, it's cool, we've got stormtroopers and there's nothing wrong, that's great. We had lots of stormtroopers, and for the RP, that's good. You can say, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 10 burst in, okay, we've got 10, or rebel troopers, but if you wanted to have some of the other characters, there was a lot, but every now and again you'd find one hard to get, and you're all right, I'll just buy it from eBay, fair enough, I'll drop some money. 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks for, yeah. for a 28 little pre-painted mini and it's like, my God, this this is just getting crazy. And of course, the, the bubble was starting to burst before Wizards didn't renew the license. Mm. And I think the, there was, I think, several factors because, I mean, they're never going to say completely. Um, some people said they lost it. Others said that Wizards didn't renew it. From memory, I think Wizards actually said they didn't renew it. They which, just straight up dropped it? Yeah, which was cost. And that meant that they weren't making, in their opinion, the money back. Which is hilarious. Yeah. Considering like, the whole economy behind it. Which exactly. makes sense, because that whole economy is... They're not getting any pocket from it. So. Absolutely. But I think that was the big problem. And 
I, I will say I like how Fantasy Flight does theirs. You mm. buy the initial box, yeah. and okay, now, fair enough, if you're still a kid, you're looking at a $100 game, but... <clears throat> you get a lot for it. You do, and if it's Christmas or your birthday, your parents might drop 100 bucks on the, on the box. Yeah. There's a lot of gaming you can do straight in the box, but then Han Solo comes out. He's ten bucks. Yeah, Princess Leia came. All the cool out. ones. Just ten bucks. When really, like in comparison, really good sculpts compared to some of these, which are kind of well, not not good. No, just to put it as that. Yeah, so, I don't want to bash on them, no, but like but some of them are dodgy as hell. Pretty bad, which is incredibly surprising because, like, what you said, these came out in two thousand and what? Yeah, they could be two thousand and six. They could be like, two thousand and six. That's not a long time ago. So the fact, like the just the quality the difference in between them it's kind of mind-boggling it's like just to put one of the old ones and the new ones side by side is kind of it's like wow yeah and even fantasy flight could do better with some of this yeah. i mean this is nice but i think that they could do better too for for 10 bucks compared to yeah. uh dark sword minis infinity yeah. there's a there's a jump so i think they could do it but yeah, there's a definite improvement between Fantasy Flight and, and these, but there's still a lot of interesting characters, and they released 60 a set, so there was a 60 new characters to to sort of collect and use. Uh, so And they all covered all the different eras, and uh, I think there's uh, Mara, things like Mara J2, she's Expanded Universe, so oh. they started incorporating some of the legend, some stuff. Of the legend stuff. There's also, um, I'm pretty sure there was ones from Knights of the Old Republic, uh, Bastila. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I just, I've got 10 out of 10 for their imagination and the fact that they created new... And they expanded, yep. up, like, you know, away from the movies as well. Exactly. Which so is, I think, a lot of people, or a lot of companies before Disney got the license, were kind of afraid to do. Yep. So I give them, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 for imagina imagination and uh, choice. Of yeah, imagination's one thing, like pirouetting Dick Vader. Oh, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> Dancing Queen, yeah. Oh, my God, that one's horrible. It's, it's un like, I give it credit, it's a good sculpt, but my God, it's a bad pose. Yeah, it is, that one's really naff. <gasps> oh, man. But, yeah, they're, they're, they are a mix, that was the only thing. I mean, some of them, I think, are pretty good. Um, yeah, they'll look a lot better when we repainted them. Uh, I already repainted one of the um, Wonder Woman's recently. Oh, what's her name? Slymore. Slymore, yeah. It's like, it's... They paint up quite nice, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you, your, I think yours is a vast improvement over the mm -hmm. um, the base one. Yeah. Not canon. Kind of different color scheme and all that. Kind of using it for my own... <laughs> For my own uses and not really as a Star Wars figure, but uh, still, she painted up nice for the most part for what it is, and I'm happy with it. Yeah, the, the for paint, a tabletop mini, it's it's perfect. And the paint went on them well enough. Yeah, it did. I was worried. I really was mm, because I the plastic is this weird like bendy thing, which is good because like if you drop it, it doesn't break. But like I wasn't sure at all uh, how the paint would go on, which big credit to. Uh, Army Painter. Mm-hmm. Which we used to right? prime it. Yeah, yeah. Army, Army Painter Primer, Primer, yeah. Army Painter Primer. That stuff was actually... It's been good to us. Oh, yeah, I mean, it covered this and it allowed the paint to go on, so how much better can you get? It, it, it so far has gone on everything that we've sprayed. Yeah, and it's and I'm pretty sure it's, that's not meant to be on a lot of things <laughs> that we sprayed, to be honest. No, it's that's, actually quite... It's, I'm impressed. That I'm, stuff's become my, uh, my extreme hot sauce. Through. You know, yeah. I put that shit on everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this stuff um, is sort of pre-done, so it's not necessarily meant to take a spray yeah. primer, but it has. Um, and acrylics on top of it? I mean, it, I doubt it would, like, melt. Well, I say that, and then it actually melts, but... Uh, I just didn't think it was going to bond. That was yeah, I thought thing. it was just going to be slippery. I had a problem, going on a tangent, I had a problem with one of them D&D &D ones, one of the early ones you uh, let, gave mm -hmm. me. And uh, for the life of me, I couldn't put it on until I like just slobbed on some paint, like even over the primer. So I'm like, eh, I was kind of skeptical when it came to this stuff, but no, it turned out well. I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, finding some of the ones that we have duplicates of. Yes. Some of the really, even the ones that we don't have duplicates of, but you know, just kind of repainting them and bringing them up to quality. Because uh, honestly, once you start putting on the um, primer, you see a lot like they pop mm -hmm. it's really nice i have a couple that i've already primed 
and the difference in between them is really impressive in my opinion it's like you can all of a sudden mm, how can I say it? the paint doesn't do justice to the skull yes a lot of the time it really is it really is quite bad but I'm looking forward to you doing Shakti yeah that's gonna be fun a lot all those robes and such because she's actually a good sculpt that is mm. a good sculpt that one there's a couple of them that are really, really, really like. Uh, I have them already. I'm primed, but um, but uh, yeah, even Yoda. Yoda's so small. My God, it's a good sculpt too. Actually, yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, he actually, he's not bad. Mm. I like some of these guys. This one's. Mm-hmm. J- just straight up Jedi Knights. What he's called. Okay. Yeah. I like one of yours. Um, the one with the flowing coat, no, the, the cape. The Jedi Knight? Oh, the that's... woman. The chicken one. Oh, yeah. Um, don't know her name. I think it's like female Jedi Knight or something. But um, I really like that one, actually. When you uh, when we were divvying these up, like rations, and you uh, pulled that one out, I was... I looked at... I kind of went through your... Yeah, that one. I went through your, like, stash, and I was like, mm, I should have picked that one. I like Stasali. That. Yeah, okay. So she does have a name. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of the council members. Oh, actually... Is she? I think... Or is she new? No, she's been. She was in the movies. We did see her in the movies. Okay. I had a feeling she was the one that dies in Clone Wars, but it was uh, <laughs> one of the ones that die in Clone Wars. That's general. The with uh, Maul, his brother. Uh, but that was um, the other one. Mm. But yeah, no, I I saw that one. I'm like, mm, I should have. I should have picked that one. I should have gave up one of the other ones and took that. But but one's uh, like um, the medic droid. Yeah, this is what they call him. He's a medical droid. Yeah, they're just medical droid. Medical the droid. Imperial medical yeah. droid. That's a nice sculpt. That is. And even the one, you have like a, what is it, a Sith Assassin or something? Dark Side Adept. Dark Side Adept. That's, huh. that's cool, right? That already is breaking the rule too, Strap. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you know what? But um, it's, it's cool. It's actually a really cool sculpt. Yeah, it's an interesting character. And from that's what I mean. From the RPG point of view, there was a new, a new and interesting character to, yeah. to use as a villain. And that's the thing. You had Force users. There was not much for them to fight on their own level because that was the whole force of law of two thing it's yeah. like so when they sort of started doing this it's like yeah he's not a dark they, I mean they break he's that he's not rule. a Sith but that's right but he's he a dark use, side of and dead. he can use the force and he has a lightsaber so yeah so you can still have these uh, these big lightsaber fights and yeah. you know stuff like that with these guys that aren't considered Sith especially with the bendy lightsabers oh yeah yeah and these are notorious guns. which my god, we actually figured out that if you boil some hot water and like a really high temperature and you dip the plastic in, like the part that's bent or whatnot or you want to fix or you don't like, you can actually kind of sort of melt it in a way and then dip it straight in like in ice cold water to temper it and it would actually straighten the Yep. It actually straighten the piece. Yep. So you could actually fix these bendy swords which honestly kinda of kill a lot of the miniatures in a way. So it's really cool that we found this. Just so, same technique for Reaper Bones. Yeah, for the Reaper Bone stuff. Yeah, same technique. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. Because I had a couple of really uh, aggressive leans. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they had one too many drinks and was exactly. falling. Like, was that your rancor? Oh my yeah, God. yeah. I oh, know he's a um, yeah. Was still, that? he's still screwed. But he's yeah. Like, like, how many times have I a usum? A use great em. big, huge, monstrous, furry beast. Yeah. But yeah, he's definitely leaning back and looking at an ATAT in front of him or something. Just like, oh. But even guys, uh, what Tambor was interesting, who was the trade fed guy, but they added guys like um, Utopia, U- Utopian, Utapian, 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 oh god, I can't even say it now. How does that sound? What sounds like? Can't uh, pronounce it. I'm having a moment. Utapian. Yeah. They added them like soldiers, which we don't really see. Utapian soldier. But they're uh, kind of samurai. They're probably based on concept art or something like that. But it's totally. really cool because they included them. So you got all these yeah. uh, new, new people, new sculpts, new new ideas. Now well, I'm looking at it. It's like pretty much the way they painted these. Going on another tangent, was just base color wash, and that's it. They just base color and wash them. Eh? Yeah. Some of the, oh, some of the eyes. Oh my god! Some of the eyes. They look like they've just seen a ghost or. <laughs> Which isn't that surprising considering it's Star Wars. 
a Gen Cola, a nice uh, sculpt, but kind of a crappy paint job. So I'm yeah. gonna have fun repainting. Now, a lot of these I want to repaint and well, all pretty much all of them, <laughs> to be honest, and uh, just breathe new life. Could I mean one of the oh no my this thing's doing the lean again. Uh, I thought I fixed this one. Because I think well, at the moment, if you can get these cheaply from somewhere, uh, one of the big things that they have over Fantasy Flight at the moment is the amount that's available. Uh, Fantasy mm. Flight's much uh, slower on their release schedule. Yeah. So while they're very cool, each and every single one, and they've also started doing the same idea of releasing characters that are new, uh, their smuggler, uh, I think he's a Reb actual alliance smuggler or something. He's really cool. I haven't seen him, I think, before anywhere. So he's new. That's really cool. But they're a much slower yeah. release. So if you can get these cheap, there's a eight or nine sets worth yeah. of 60. So And if you don't want to paint them, there's plenty of people that are repainting them and you can yep. already get and we're talking about the wizards of the coast ones here right now uh you can get they've come pre-painted so if you aren't you know in the knack of painting them they're already done they're already done yeah. if you don't and if you can you know if you don't get mind past them the, <laughs> yeah get past some of the badder ish paint jobs i mean it's not bad yeah if you don't mind them the way they are they're already done yeah and then some people repaint them we're planning on repainting them as well and getting onto that so uh, you have a much larger variety if you just need yeah. a 28 mil Star Wars minis. So yeah, we're going to be posting finished ones, I think, to the channel, just yeah. to show off what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, include them in some of our IPs too. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Did you uh, you take one of mine? Nope, that was my dude. Are you Wasn't lying? he? Was he? Was he? I think so. Yeah, no. Yeah, I pulled him out, right? Yeah, yeah. Was yours. And if it wasn't yours, then you could keep him anyways. <laughs> <laughs> You've got enough to keep you going. Yeah, well, we both do, actually. Yeah. And then you have to crank out more boxes, so... Uh, and geez. we will be reviewing the D&D &D ones, which also came yeah. out at the time. They're still doing this, but they moved them to Who made the D&D &D ones? Uh, it was them, but then they moved... Wizard of the Coast? Yeah, but then okay. they moved them to WizKids now. Okay, no. That's they cool. actually farmed out their new figures. Yeah. So... Well, that'd be cool. So look forward to that. As soon as I find where we put them. Yeah, that's that's the only thing. Gonna have to find them. Only only professional quality here. Oh yeah. We're not filming this. Yeah, we're recording this in a kitchen. I know, when when we fail, we fail professionally. <laughs> <laughs> I want a shirt that says that. Uh and a coffee mug. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's about all we can yeah. say for it. We've, we've included the pictures as well of some of the ones that we liked in that to just sort of show off the set, yeah. give you an idea. And uh, one of them uh, is the before and after, Sly Moore. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the one, the white one is as it is in the set, and the blue one is, is the, uh, penguins. So yeah. that gives you an idea of what can be done with them. And look for more of these as we get through them. Yeah. So it's a good night from me. So. Good morning for me. And it's a good night from him. <laughs> Please tell me that was good. <laughs>